Hi, I'm Ryan Magnin with Pandemony Toy Brands, and as we learned in the last video, I'm not actually Ryan Magnin, if you're watching this, I'm actually audio and visual data representing Ryan Magnin in audiovisual form. And what is the reason for recording this audio and visual data? Well, it's to answer that age-old question, what's after phase two of alternation? Is there a phase three? Of course, it has to be phase three. It wouldn't be phase 12 or something. It, you, you usually you wanna go in chronological, well, not chronological, sequential order. And if you've been following along with our altered reality game at gkdelta.navy, you know that we've introduced quite a few new characters and we're eager to make them into toys. Let's check them out right now. In the graphic novel They Hide Hybrids, available through Dark Horse Comics, we left off on a cliffhanger where we finally get a glimpse of what's hidden inside the GK Gamma Bunker. What our GK Delta heroes don't know is that Gamma are the espionage and intelligence counterpart to Delta's Strike Force team. As far as the Deltas know, Sham is the only hybrid working for the Agency. Hopper will be featured in her first adventure later this year in a story called Enter the Dragonfly. You might have guessed, Hopper is part dragonfly and part grasshopper. Half of her face is bug-like and she covers it with a traditional samurai mask, leading you to ask, what's the connection with Japan? Well, we don't want to spoil that yet, but it's a pretty good story. Her special abilities are, of course, flight, as well as insect-like reflexes. Our plans for Hopper as a toy uh, would utilize those large dragonfly wings she has and still keep that articulation uh, that you've come to expect from an alternation figure. We don't want to talk about how we plan to accomplish all that because we are paranoid that another company with more money will beat us to market. Next we've got Lynx. Lynx uh, has been alluded to in short stories and shown in the cliffhanger of They Hide Hybrids, but our audience is still a bit in the dark about her. Lynx is about 13, so about the same age as Dart, uh, but she's incredibly intelligent with computers. She's better than Sham, Mira, anybody. She's also into cutesy kawaii type stuff and she's often hiding emojis and memes inside of the apps she builds. At the same time, or as the French would say, a juxtaposition, uh, she prefers being outdoors to being cooped up in an office, or in this case, a bunker. Lynx is part fox, part saber-toothed tiger, and Lynx, of course. She's a Lynx, her name is Lynx. The toy version of Lynx would showcase her tech savviness with uh, some LCDs in incorporated into the accessories, and on her person, she would have extendable claws on her hands and feet. Now, you can't just have a girl fox character. No, there's a rule against that somewhere. But that's okay, because one of my favorite animals is the fennec fox. Meet Fletch. In addition to Fennec Fox, Fletch is also part beaver. Fletch is the saboteur of the Gamma team. His missions take him into enemy territory where he'll sneak through back doors or waterways to blow up things or crack safes, things like that. As you could probably guess from his animal DNA, he's as sly as a beaver too. He ends up manipulating people just to do things like get out of work. He would probably fit right in in our offices with that sort of attitude. Fletch's toy would feature uh, a wind-up tail that would help him propel through water. Mm, pretty fun. Our last member of GK Gamma is Birch. We originally had Birch uh, part crow, but uh, we thought she needed a redo because this look wasn't appealing to us. Kids didn't really like it either. What do you guys think? Mm, good change? Birch's owl DNA allows her to fly, but it makes her bones and muscle lighter than most of the hybrids, which is why her sea urchin DNA offers her some venomous defense. Birch's action figure would uh, have a feature that would let her glide right through the air and again, have all of the articulation you've come to expect from an alternation toy. We should just call it alterculation at this point. Anyway. I'm really eager to talk about this next character, and if you've been following our comments and reading our short stories, you've seen a lot of characters talk about a, something called garbage. When the powers that be experimented with genetics, they weren't as careful as they maybe should have been with the uh, leftover waste. It was dumped off the coast of San Nicolas Island, where it formed a new life form altogether with the genetics of all the nearby sea life, and plants, and fish, and even some random trash. So, garbage was born. 
Our goal with the toy was to make garbage a blob that can be ever expanding by utilizing a fastener system. So you'd buy the base model which would come with the bulk mass and it would also come with little figurines what we call garbage men. The garbage men would then connect to the bulk mass in random spots or could connect to other garbage men allowing you to make garbage as big as you want. Then those garbage men would be sold in individual packs at random. So you get blind box but it's random garbage. Doesn't that sound great? The bulk mass of garbage would have wheels and when you scoot it across the floor it'll push the skin out all around and look really gnarly. Last in our character lineup I do want to show Gastro and Dayglo. They were, uh, these are very early concepts we have for a couple characters. It's a little too early to get into their story but what we can say is that Gastro is part mantis shrimp, conch, and squid. We'd like its toy to be able to hide in its shell and do a spring-loaded punch. Dayglow is part newt, jellyfish, and chitin, which is a mollusk with magnetic teeth. Arf! We'd like his toy to have some bioluminescent or magnetic features. Maybe both. Uh, maybe we can use electromagnetic power as long as it passes the safety testing. As I said, those characters are still in the early phases, and uh, we had no plans to, you know, disclose them to the public. But since we need the public to see uh, the brand's potential, we wanted to disclose them. Why the heck not? Now, what kind of action figure line would we be if we didn't have plans for vehicles? Hmm. One that we'd really like to make is the USS Allen Dulles, named after the controversial CIA director. Its cruise ship exterior would be able to transform into an aircraft carrier. The Dulles in our story allows the military to send our heroes on covert missions all around the world, you know, just disguised as a cruise ship. Uh, we'd love to turn this into a real transforming toy someday. It may just be a matter of size. Alternation is a 112 scale action figure brand, and it's hard to imagine an aircraft carrier at 112 scale not taking up an entire room. Uh, in our next video, we're going to be looking at other brands that are not Alternation and some of the toy concepts behind them. I hope you uh, enjoyed this look at Alternation's future, and uh, we do want to stress that if you don't fund this Kickstarter and you don't get George and Lorraine to the dance, uh, help fund this Kickstarter.